So what's going on YouTube? My name is Mehul and welcome back to another video in which we're gonna see how we can implement a stack in JavaScript, a stack data structure. Well, a stack, if you don't know what it is, it is a data structure which is based on last in, first out. By that, what I mean is consider that this is your stack, right? So you could push multiple elements in it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, pretty much anything you want. And you see the last element which you put in here, that is seven in this case, would be the first one you could actually access. And this is the only element in the stack which you could access anyway, right? So you could access only seven. Once you access seven, you can pop it or use it. Then you get to six. Then maybe you get to five if you don't push it even more. If you push like eight, then, then you only get access to eight and so on and so forth. So stack has a has a wide variety of applications, which is the first one I'll just show you. Um, let's say you get a question that you have to um, tell whether these brackets are, you know, brackets like these are is a valid pattern or not. A valid pattern is something which includes both the opening and the closing bracket, right? So you have a very complex statement like this, something like this, right? So you have stuff like this so you have to validate if this is a valid expression and again this is valid only if both opening and closing braces are present in a correct order right just like we do in a programming language so first of all let's just go ahead and create a stack first a stack class so i'm going to say class stack and just because we are using an array what we could do instead is that we could pretty much extend this from an array which would give give us access to all those push pop methods and we do not really need to maintain a separate array as well so in this class we would have a constructor and that this right here refers to an empty array because this is what we are extending from right so what we could do is we could just get elements and uh, we could just say not really this sorry super actually refers to an empty array right this refers to this particular class right so we call this with elements so what happens now is if i go ahead and create a stack is new stack and i pass one two three in here and if i console log this what we're going to see if i run node mon stack.js you would see that we pretty much get this stack one two three as our output so far so good now let's just add some utility methods to it the first one being push right so we have push method and we also have push methods for arrays so we're going to get an element here and we're going to say super dot push element now because we are not doing anything else here it's kind of redundant so we could actually get rid of this and still it would just work fine because we do have access to push method because of extending from array so i'm going to say 100 here and if i console log now you're going to see that we get one to 300 as our output let's create a pop method now now pop also is also included in arrays but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say if this dot length is actually zero then I want to throw new error that um, nothing to pop right and it's safe so what happens here is that if I try to pop now you see that we get one two three oh we also have to pop it so I'm gonna say super dot pop right here save and I'm gonna pop it one more time one two one empty stack and then we get an error that there's nothing to pop right here right now don't be confused with this with the interchanging use of this and super here the reason I'm using this here you could also use super here and it would just work fine this dot length pretty much looks up on super dot length only because of the prototypal inheritance model but i'm not i cannot call this dot pop here because our method name inside this particular class and what we are calling here is same so if i had a method name like underscore pop then this would be fine this dot pop would be fine now i assume that you are aware of the prototypal inheritance model how classes work in javascript that is why i'm skipping over this detail but this is something you should know right so if you want to call that method which is um in your parent class and it has the same name you're gonna make use of super here all right let's create another method called peak which gives us a 
look up on what the first element is in a stack. So I'm gonna again say if this dot length is zero, then I just want to throw a new error that stack is empty, right? Otherwise, I just want to return this, this dot length minus one, right? So again, remember that there is pretty much if you're accessing this and you're accessing properties like this dot length, which does not exist inside this class, it's gonna look it up on the extended class, right? So you could obviously go ahead and make use a super here as well. Wouldn't make any difference, but just to keep things clean, I'm gonna make use of this, right? So right here, if we see, if I do s dot peak here, you're gonna see we get 100, right? And if I do, <clears throat> let's say, s dot pop here, save, we get 100 and then s.p gives us 3 because our array right here was 1, 2, 3, 100. Then we got 100. Then we popped, we got 100 out and we got 3 here because of 1, 2, 3, right? All right, so this is our basic implementation of stack. And now let's just go ahead and solve the question I proposed in the starting of the video. So we have these couple of strings which we want to check if they are correctly aligned or not and you see the only difference here is that I have removed the square bracket from the string too so it makes it um, wrong that means this one should throw an error not really an error just you know it should inform that this is not correctly formed right the opening braces does not match the closing braces so let's just create a function called check and I'm gonna get a string in here. And what I'm gonna do is first of all, I'm gonna split this string into individual characters. So I'm gonna say this is array and I'm gonna say this is string dot split this one, which would eventually give us an array consisting of individual elements like this, so on and so forth, right? Now, what we want to do is that we want to push everything to a stack which is an opening and if we got anything which is closing we want to pop from the stack and check if it matches our peaked element okay so what the hell did i just say let me just explain it via code so i'm going to create a new stack by saying new stack right here right and i'm going to say for let i zero i is less than ar dot length i plus plus right i'm going to get current um, let's say current uh, uh, whatever we want to call it element is ARR of I which gives us individual access to all of these right now what I'm gonna say that if current element is equal to an opening or maybe current element is equal to let's say this curly brace or current element is equal to let's say this one now you could actually simplify this even more by placing this is in an array and then comparing that current element exist in that array but i'm gonna just skip over that right if that is the case what we want to do is we want stack dot push current element right if that is not the case that means that we have arrived at this point or at this point or at this point right that means that so i'm gonna first of all get uh, last element by saying stack dot peak right then what i'm going to say that if my last element is actually equal to um this and current element is equal to not really this actually this because our last element would consist of this one inside a stack and this that means this is okay right this case is okay right Else if my last element is equal to this and my current element is equal to this, this is also okay, right? Else if my last element is equal to this and my current element is equal to this, this is also okay, right? Otherwise, if that is not the case, that means there is some mismatch that my last element is maybe like this or and my current element is maybe like this so there was a mismatch right that means this is not okay and we're gonna return false right here right apart from this we're gonna also check that our stack is actually not empty because if it is empty then that means there was no match found for any of the opening brace so i'm gonna say if stack dot size 
um, I'm not really sure if we implemented that. Okay, we didn't. So let's just go ahead and implement this. And I'm just gonna return this dot length, right? And yeah. And I'm gonna just say here if stack dot size is equal to zero, that means our stack is empty. That just means that this has already failed because we shouldn't have never got into this particular else block if our stack was empty, right? Finally, what I'm gonna do is right here, if we take a look, if our stack dot size is still not zero, that means there are certain elements like these which are left open, right? That also means that um, this is a wrong expression. Otherwise, this is a correct expression, right? So here's our code. And now we could pretty much just go ahead and say, um, check string one, hit save. And actually, let me just run this. So we get false on string one. Now that is because obviously we need to pop the stack as well. Hit save, and then we get true on string one, right? Similarly for string two, we're gonna save and we get false for string two, which is correct, right? We could further like um, know uh, where it failed. So we're gonna say failed at one. Um, we could pretty much say failed at two and failed at three, right? So we're gonna try all the variants here. So for the fail at one, we're gonna get, let me just get rid of this string two here. And I'm gonna say this particular check right here. You see we get failed at three because right here, you see that our stack was never empty because we arrived at here, we never got here. So our stack was never empty when we got out of the loop, right? Similarly, if I have something like this, we're gonna get failed at one because our stack was size zero, but we still got into this particular loop, right? On a similar basis, if we have something like this, you see that we get failed at two because our stack was of size one, but there were no matching elements for this particular condition, so all these conditions, right? And you could also combine them using um, basically just all them together. I just kept them separate if else to keep the code clean, but you could pretty much go ahead and do that. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video for stacks in JavaScript. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe, press the bell icon, and thank you for watching. I'll see you then in the next one.